Hi, and welcome to another God Day here on Revelation TV with me, the Reverend Dave Hodgson. I hope you are well. Wherever you're watching this, whether it's on our YouTube channel, on our app, on old-fashioned television, wherever it may be, on analog TV, on satellite TV, then we welcome you today. And we're going to look today at seven ways to pray through um, politics in your life. No, we're not just talking about family politics, we're talking about national politics. It's become very much a part of our life, hasn't it, over the years. Do you remember years ago, people used to say to you, the taxi drivers in London or wherever you may have used to live, they used to say back in the day, don't talk to me about religion or politics. Don't want to talk about religion or politics. Well, it seems now that more people are talking about politics than ever before. And we should welcome that. It should be, we should have welcomed the fact that people are engaging with politics because it's important to engage with politics. But how often it is that people have become so polarised and that they have such strong opinions that when they do start talking about politics, you think, OK, I'm going to leave that well alone. And many of us, as we look at the news and what's going on in our world right now, we're, the world is fascinated by leaders and politics and the decisions that are being made. So as we progress through this year, and there's lots of politics this year, that's for sure, then what are the conditions of a Christian response to what's going on in our pol political world? It can be easy to let our emotions get the better of us or to completely ignore it altogether. When you ask somebody, who are you voting for? Or who do you vote for generally? Then sometimes that can start off an argument and our emotions can get the better of us. But during this important year, wherever you may be watching this and whenever you're watching it, it's always important. But keeping a level head and a prayerful mind is the best way to make the right choices. Whether you're, whether you're waiting for an election or candidates, it's important that we pray into all of it. If you're having trouble staying focused on what God is telling you during this time, then the seven tips I want to give you from the Bible that will help you when we're coming towards either an election period or a heightened tension in politics that, let's face it, has been around for quite a long time in our UK politics, certainly since Brexit. After all, politicians will come and go, but God remains with us throughout all eternity. Some of the things that we're concerning ourselves now won't concern us in a few years' time. Some of the things that we are falling out with people about now won't be an issue in three or four years' time. And we can get so caught up in the moment, we need to pull back and look at the bigger picture. You might not like or agree with the Prime Minister of the UK. You might not like or agree with the President of the United States of America. But the God exhorts us and the Bible exhorts us to pray for these people. You may disagree with their policies. You may vehemently disagree with what they stand for. But the Bible exhorts us to pray for them. And so I want to remind you today that we are exhorted to pray for those who are in leadership over us, that we may live a peaceful life. So politics and the Bible. You don't have to go too far in the Bible to find countless stories of politics and elections within its pages. Whether it's God's appointing Moses to lead the Israelites, to Esther and Mordecai efforts to work with their local authorities, to save the Jewish people, to how political figures handled the ministry of Jesus and his 12 disciples. We see politics throughout the Bible. What we learn through these biblical stories is that people of God can be involved in politics without lessening their relationship with their father. If anything, God's word reveals that we are called to be involved in the politics of the world through our prayers, service and love. Yes, we are called to submit to authority in the world. Romans 13, 1 to 3 says that, Peter 2, 13 to 16. But we, we do so obediently with God's perspective in mind. We're called to live by the laws of the land, but there may come a time when the law of the land tells you that you can't read your Bible. What would you do in that situation? God's word reminds us that he is the ultimate authority and his word is the final authority on all matters concerning moral conduct and living our lives. If anything, God's word reveals that we are called to be involved with politics more so. What God says to us in prayer through scripture and through other believers is how we move forward in this world, respecting those in authority and honouring and following God first in everything. So 
when it's a heightened movement of politics that you may be experiencing right now, or whether it's a general election, or maybe it's a European election, or something else is happening that's of uh, equal importance, what do we do in the, in the midst of political turmoil and political change? Number one, no surprises here, we pray to keep your head at peace and be aware. It can be so stressful when you're watching, especially if you go down a, a rabbit warren on YouTube and you watch certain videos, it can lead you to depression. And you can start to get really depressed about the state of the world if you read certain newspapers. My encouragement would be to you would be to read across the board and to find channels that are giving out a good balance of left and right. If you read a particular paper, read another paper that has a different opinion. It's worth looking and not just getting into, uh, into kind of uh, an echo chamber where all you're hearing is the same stories being echoed back at you in the same perspectives. It's good. It's good actually, you know, for us, let's face it, as Christians, we are to love one another. We're to love everybody. And it, and it can be very divisive when we start getting up talking politics because it can alienate people. So we've got to be able to uh, have a different view to somebody else, but still love them. Um, that we don't fall into the trap of the world where we hate each other because you, you support a particular side and I support another side. That we can't see eye to eye. That actually, where's, where are the days when we used to disagree with each other yet still able to be friends? We could disagree one another but still share a drink in the bar together. We could disagree one another but still go out for meals together. We might not vote the same way. I've got friends who vote differently to me. And my family have voted differently over the years as well. And I think that's a great place to be where we can agree to disagree with people. There'll be people in your church who will hold different views on some of the major news stories that are happening around the world right now. And they will be on one side of the argument and you'll be on the other side of the argument. Does that mean you can't talk to that person and be friends with them? I think that we as Christians need to model what it is to be Christians living in unity, being able to have opinions, being able to look at different things, have opinions of what's going on in the world and yet still love one another. The world is crying out for that right now. The world is crying out for people who are able to have an opinion, stand their ground and yet still love other people with different viewpoints. Have you already judged a person coming into church because of their lifestyle? Have you already said that they can't come into church? because of their lifestyle? Or is God saying, I want you to be able to look from their perspective and see what I am doing in their lives? Not just from their perspective, but my God's perspective into the situation. Quite often we've had people come into church with a different lifestyle and people said, you can't have those in church. And I've turned around and said, you can't have me either because I'm a sinner. We've all fallen short. And so I'm hoping that we can, as a church, model what it is to be Republican and Democrat, but still get on as Christians, to be conservative and Labour, to be SNP against Liberal Democrats and still get on with each other. So number one, pray to keep your head and heart at peace and aware. As mentioned above, it can be very easy to let an election or a political movement get the best of us emotionally. This can lead to arguments, strained relations with others, and even extreme actions. Before praying for anything regarding the election, we must first pray for ourselves and we keep our heads and hearts attuned to what God is saying. And we make peaceful decisions on how we are still to live and vote. I was speaking to an American lady the other day and uh, when I was talking to her, was, we, uh, the topic of politics came up and she said to me, don't ask me who I'm gonna vote for. And I said, why not? She said, because if, if I tell you who I'm going to vote for, you're either going to be agreeing with me or disagreeing with me, and I just rather didn't go into it. And it's got to the place now where you have people speaking out so strongly online, going to uh, political rallies, going to protests, doing all kinds of things that are aligning themselves with particular movements, and yet probably are not going to share too much with you because they don't want you to disagree with them. So you've got people who fall in two traps. You've got those who are overtly speaking out and those who are just saying, don't talk to me about Brexit. Don't talk to me about the American election. Don't talk to me about the general election. Don't talk to me about who you believe in and what your party is. I don't want to know. So pray to keep your head and heart at peace. 
We simply need to come at times of political upheaval and to pray for our leaders and to pray for ourselves as well, that we can live at peace and know God's heart. Secondly, pray to receive truthful information. There's so many things going on out there in our world. As I said, you can go down a, a, a rabbit warren, you can go down, you can come into an echo chamber. If you start liking certain YouTube channels, it will then recommend you with the algorithm to like other channels. And before you know it, you're just getting into all this stuff. Some people have got caught up in conspiracy theories so much that, they, that everything is a conspiracy theory because they are being, it's being hammered at them all the time. Be careful. Pray that God gives you the truth of what's really going on, that you have the spirit of discernment in your life, that you're able to say, I don't know, or be able to say, actually, I don't know if that's right or wrong. I don't know if that's true or false, but I'm not going to let it affect me. There are many news outlets in the world today, both print and online, to inform us about the elections or political situations that are happening in our news, or wars even. But it's best to know what the sources are supplying the correct information. Quite often uh, when I do my radio show, I will read a news story out about um, bacon is good for you, for instance. And then you read that the survey was done by the butchers of Great Britain. <laughs> and we have to look at the source of where it comes from. Pray to be sensible in what you read. See and hear regarding the news updates about the election. I'd also say this, know when to turn the television off. Know when to turn the radio off and know when to turn the news off. Know when to stop reading the newspaper. Come back and read the word of God. Spend time in his presence. And there's, there was a time when, um, because of my job in radio and, and doing different things in the media, I have to be aware of what's going on. So I hear news stories. And some of the stories that I hear as I do my radio show and I hear other news readers reading them out are horrendous. Horrendous. And if I was to hear those stories all day, and let's face it, you can on Sky News or on BBC News or GB News, whoever it may be, you can get that rolling all day. And by the end of the day, you're going to be pretty depressed. Know when to turn it off. Know when to say enough's enough. I'm going to read my Bible. So first of all, pray to keep your head and heart at peace. Secondly, pray for truthful information to come your way. Number three, pray to remain calm in heated debates. As, the, as elections draw near, as political upheaval takes place, and let's face it, we're never too far away from a political scandal, it seems like everyone wants to voice their opinions on what's going on or on the candidates and issues which can also lead to heightened emotions. If you know people who will be spending time with family, friends and co-workers who want to discuss the election, pray before interacting with them that you will remain calm in the discussion. Uh, I've, sometimes even at home in marriage, you can feel like you're being dragged into a debate or a conversation or an argument and inside I'm saying, Dave, 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 don't bite, don't bite, Dave, don't bite. Somebody's trying to drag you into a debate. Don't bite. They're wanting you to come in. And I'm thinking all along, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to bite. I'm going to stay out of this. I'm going to stay mutual. I'm not going to even put my opinion across. It's not worth it because I'm not going to bother. Oh, by the way, can I just add? Rightly or wrongly, I've stopped putting stuff up on Facebook about political views I have because you, nobody ever went onto Facebook and said, I've changed my mind because of a Facebook post. Very rarely, I've never heard anybody say that. And quite often you start to see people um, really, really start to fall out of each other. And I've had friends of mine that don't know other friends of mine on my Facebook page falling out of each other before they've even met each other. I'm thinking you'd actually like each other in real life, but on here, You've sworn enemies because you have a difference of opinion. Be very careful about what you share on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, or on Twitter, or X, or whatever it's called. Try to remain calm and pray to remain calm in that situation as well. That you remain calm when the discussion gets heated. Somebody once said, you know, it's why sometimes just to keep thy mouth shut, thy mouth shut. <laughs> even in the midst of debate that you didn't even anticipate. Keep praying that you will remain calm so that you can honour Christ in this interaction. Number four, 
and I mentioned this, alluded to earlier on, pray for the leaders of our parties. Pray for the opposition leader. Pray for those members of parliament. Pray for members of Congress. Whatever you may be watching, it might be a different political system there. We, but, and if it's an election taking place now, pray for the candidates. We will probably have candidates that we hope will win the election, but it's best to pray for all of them. Even those you don't particularly like, pray that the candidates will be truthful when asked about what they will uphold in office. That's a massive prayer, isn't it? If they are elected. What issues matter most to them instead of what is the most popular? Pray for protection for their families, friends and the campaign co-workers <coughs> as they travel along their campaign routes. We are living in dark times where people can make drastic choices. We've seen, haven't we? in our UK parliament, members of parliament being killed. And I don't care what your political opinion is, whether you are Labour or Conservative or something else. You may be a staunch blue Conservative, but when you hear of a Labour politician being murdered, what she believes in is horrendous. And later on, a Conservative MP lost his life as well. And we need to pray for the protection on them. Pray, number five, for important issues to be addressed truthfully by all candidates. Quite often, candidates will go to the thing that's going to win them the votes. Or a prime minister will go to the situation that's kind of got the, the latest news story in the Daily Mail. Uh, it's getting people's attention. We need to pray that they will deal with the things that are really important to the leading and running of the country, not just jump at the latest thing that's out there. Each political party will have issues that are close to their hearts, and the top of their agendas. But pray that all issues, especially those important to God, will be discussed by the candidates and by politicians in Parliament. Pray that they will give honest statements on how they will help resolve issues close to citizens such as housing, taxes and the economy, election and more. You know, folks, as everyday citizens, we can feel pretty detached from what's going on in Parliament and those that are in leadership of others. And we can always, and especially when we see a wars going on in the Middle East, or we see wars going on in Europe or, or Africa, we can feel like, what can we really do to influence that situation or to change it? And the, the only thing, and it isn't just an only thing, it's a powerful thing, is that we pray. And we can pray. And prayer is a powerful tool. It really is. Prayer is so powerful. So pray for important issues. Number six, pray for the safety for candidates, voters and the election administration. Pray that as the election takes place, that it will be smooth and that things will go well. Or if we're not in election period right now, as you watch this, pray for those who are having to make decisions today. Number seven, pray that we remember no matter the outcome for this, whatever political upheaval, a vote in the House of Commons, a general election, whatever it may be that we are facing right now, whatever the outcome is, God's will be done. God is still in control. We can easily fall, you know when uh, Donald Trump won the election, uh, Barack Obama obviously didn't want him to win, and the next day he said, look, the sun still rises. In other words, whatever, whoever's in power, the sun's still going to rise the next day. God is still in control. That's not a political statement, by the way. I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for. Pray that we remember no matter the outcome for this election or process, God is still in control. We can easily fall into despair if our candidates don't win an election. And I saw it when we were covering the election last time on Revelation TV a while ago. People were distraught that their party wasn't winning. Absolutely distraught, like they were going to leave the country. He knows the outcome. God knows the future. He knows who will be president next. He knows who will be prime minister next. He knows which party will win. He knows what, which direction they're going to take the country in as well. It's not a surprise to God. And we're not to get distressed or distraught about it, about it either. The outcome of election, he knows the next president, he knows who it will be. Future will bring no surprises to God. God has known since the beginning of time what will happen in this moment that we're living in right now. An election year, a political scandal, upheaval, a political vote can bring out the passions in us all. And it's a passionate time as several people will pin their hopes and dreams on those decisions being made. 
and news reports we will just go ballistic you notice if it, if we're in an election period the, the channels just go absolutely electric don't they with coverage of the election whatever you're facing right now politically whatever situations you have and it can just be a political in the church as well or in your denomination we have to trust ultimately that God is in control and whoever is in the White House whoever is in number 10 Downing Street whoever is the president of Spain or the president of Italy it doesn't matter as long as we know God is still sovereignly on the throne through prayer, we come back to the source of our strength and love and power. Prayer has a great way of taking us from all the turmoil of what's going on in the world and centering us, centering us back on Jesus, reminding us that he is what it is all about. And prayer in the midst of turmoil in your life and in my life reminds us of who it is all about through the example of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are aligned with God to follow him through the storms and uncertainties of life. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can know we are following the will of God and not letting unrestrained passion get the better of our judgment and ability to vote. What use is it to fall out with a friend over what's happening in the political world right now? What use is it to win an argument and lose a friend or lose a family member over something political that you can't control except you can pray? So this year, don't let your prayer life be lessened during political upheaval, during a political debate, during an election, during the big events of what's happening in the world right now where everybody has an opinion on it. You know, when COVID happened, I just think you have to mention that word and you've already got an opinion on COVID. Brexit, you already have an opinion on Brexit. It might have changed. You may now be a Remainer rather than a, a Lever or the other way around. It might have changed. But the most important thing is not whether the church has Remainers or Levers in there or the church has Labour supporters or Liberal Democrat supporters or conservative supporters or Democrats or Republicans. The most important thing is that the church has Christians. Christians. In Acts, the book of Acts, it says that they all had everything in common. Does that mean that they all support a Derby County? I'd like to think so, but it probably isn't true. In fact, none of them did. But does that mean then that we're all to support the same football team, that we're all to wear the same clothes, we're all to like Taylor Swift, or we're all to like this song and that song? Or does it mean that even though we've got differences of opinion, we are all in one accord? That we can have a different political opinion to somebody else, and that doesn't make us right or wrong, it makes it different. We can have a different opinion to our brother and sister who works doing the teas and coffees or the welcome team. And we're not going to grieve everybody. And you will get rubbed up the wrong way in church. A friend of mine once said that we're all like sandpaper in church. We rub up against each other and there's friction. But eventually, we all become smoother. It's God's design that we are in a church. Not where everybody agrees with everybody. Not where we all support the same football team or NFL team or whatever your team is. It really, really isn't about that. It's about saying, you know what? You can be a Nottingham Forest fan and I can be a Derby County fan. You can be Labour and I can be Conservative and we're still going to get on because of Christ Jesus in our lives. Because he, we can agree on this, that Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross of Calvary, took our sins, gave us forgiveness and was risen again on the third day. And I can agree with people on that, even though we might not agree on other things. And by agreeing on that, we have everything in common. Because once you agree on Christ, that's the most important thing to agree on. Some of you are vegans, others are meat lovers. You can be in the same house group because, we, because of Christ. So whatever is happening, rather than jump straight to Facebook and give your opinion, rather, rather than just voicing it out, and sometimes you can be passionate about what's going on in the world right now, and there's nothing wrong with that, 
Let that passion drive you to prayer. Rather than drive you to social media, rather than drive you to a political debate, rather than drive you to question time or to something else on a, on a particular political channel, <coughs> let it drive you to prayer. That you may pray for those that disagree with you, that you may pray for those on another side of the political uh, stratosphere, that you may pray for those in a different party, and that you're able to say, you know what, we disagree on abortion, we disagree on this, we disagree on that, and yet I can still pray for you, and you can still pray for me. There is, we know from Scripture, right and wrong. And in our world is trying to tell us today there is no right and wrong, it's everybody's own truth. No, we know there's right and wrong. There are people who will, will be wrong in their opinion, and it will be anti-biblical. And we need to pray for those people. Rather than get angry with them, and get wound up and for you know we can win an argument and lose a soul nobody has ever argued into the kingdom of god it's his kindness that leads to repentance and so as we draw this to a close as this god day comes to an end you may be in a place where you feel so stressed by what's going on politically in our world right now and it can be quite domineering in our lives so i want to pray for you right now that you would know God's peace and God's presence in your life. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Lord, in the midst of turmoil and distress, we can know your peace. In the midst of the world around us and everything losing its head, we can know your grace and your mercy in our lives. So Father, today, would you grant your peace again to each one of us, whatever's going on in our world right now, that we would know your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. From me, Dave Hodgson, I'll see you very soon. God richly bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.